you guys need to be careful with all the 7-Elevens that you go to, you guys. They are literally scamming people at the 7-Eleven. They have installed credit card scammers on top of the credit card machine in order to take your information, y'all. And he knows about it. Check this out. Bro, are you sure that's not fake? The person's not ready for the truth. They're going to get angry at it and protect the lie mm -hmm. by rejecting you. That's what I've learned. Man loves his candy. And if you try to take it away from him, he will hate you until he's ready. Now, you don't have that response from people that love God who are doing wrong. When a person loves God and they hear something and they're doing it wrong, they get instantly convicted and they say, I'm done. That makes sense to me. A pastor preaches a sermon, then tells people, hey, I need everybody to just, you know, just pray for me and the family because my wife died. Um, he then says she had mental health issues. She offed herself, according to him. But, well, there's more to the story. He may actually be involved. With millions watching and many people benefiting from this program called Indisputable, we just need 1% of the viewers to become a... I call you done. I call you done. Gone. You come down, come down, and you crawl on your oh, belly like God commanded you when he put his foot on your head. The last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good. Welcome to a brand new episode of Highly Motivated, where we have addicted ourselves to the ministry of the saints. If this is your first time joining us here on Highly Motivated, we dissect all of the crazy conspiracies and wild things that are going on in the world today. But the thing that we do differently is that we don't fear monger and we have the answer. We have the prescription, the one way that you can be saved from all of this craziness, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. So while we do watch some pretty crazy videos, we also get into the Word of God. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. So the Met Gala just recently took place and ever since the internet has not stopped talking about just how out of touch these celebrities truly, truly are. There's been a lot of Hunger Games references and just the excess in just the amount of money the ticket costs. And, you know, I did read some of the comments in the video we're about to watch, and uh, a few of them were saying that it was a charity event. And I just like to point out that the charity that they donate to is their own. <laughs> so, it, it bullshit. That's all I gotta say. Carried a whole year salary in her hand that just disappeared afterwards. The ice purse was $22,000 and it took 85 hours to complete. It has a handcrafted rose with pure lines made of 18 karat rose gold, set with flawlessly cut half carat diamonds. And the body of the purse was crafted from expensive water from the Nevis in Germany. The block of ice has an estimated cost of $22,500, but it was melting the entire time she was carrying it and it made her hands really numb. Oh, poor baby. The ice purse had straps, but they snapped almost immediately and she had go carry it in her hand as a clutch the entire event, which made her hands numb. Good. Many people express meanwhile she carries a $22,000 water cube purse, the water in Michigan. Looks like this and many don't even have an access to clean water across the United States and the world. While others think this was an excessive flaunt of wealth as she literally melted away tens of thousands of dollars in a time while most people can barely afford anything. Iron from tickets that cost $75,000 per person into the excessively expensive costumes it rubbed many people the wrong way. Now, since the Met Gala happened, a new trend has popped up on TikTok, and that trend is blocking celebrities. 
Now, the one way, especially in our society and especially especially for those people to hurt them is through their wallets. And by blocking these people, you shrink their reach. And this is actually called, yes, you got it. They are now blocking the politicians too. Oh, don't forget these politicians either. And don't forget Instagram. So I'm gonna start with the very, very top. I'm just gonna block both Biden and Trump. I'm not with it. I'm not with it. I think they're both just very bad candidates. And I'm very sad that this is the best that America can do. Like, seriously? For real, though? Like, I'm in Camp Jesus. I'm not on any camp. Exactly. Biden. We do not entangle ourselves with the things of this world. And you cannot serve Jesus and simultaneously be heavy into politics. It's literally like serving two masters. Or Trump, honestly. I, I just don't like either one of them. And I think they're both evil and have an antichrist spirit, but in different ways. I think a lot of Christians follow Trump because it just kind of matches a Christian's agenda with the anti-abortion thing. Um, and then Biden is just extremely incompetent. But at the same time, neither one are honestly neither one align with Jesus in my opinion like it just I just don't see either one nobody needs to necessarily be holier than thou but when you're selling blasphemy bibles <laughs> for for yet another for for trials and stuff like that just I'm just not with it also why does Biden have this icon this this emoji of like the red eyes and stuff like that on official campaign stuff like, bro, you're evil. You're evil, too. They're literally trolling us. I'm... Like, I'm just not with none of it. Yeah, so all that, yeah, y'all can just boom, bye. <laughs> like, I'm not with bye, it. I, I never want to hear about Hunter Biden ever again as well. I just, no. You know what I wish is we, I wish we had a viable third party option. that Like other countries, like other democratic countries do. That would be dope. Because this is just a tire fire. And if I don't need to deal with this tire fire till November, boom. A tire fire. What do you guys think would happen if everyone blocked every politician, didn't watch any news channels, didn't engage in any of the debates, and then no one at all voted? What do you think would happen? I feel like they would probably lie and say they had a record turnout and then they would still just place whoever they chose in any way, right? There are scammers everywhere. With new technology comes new ways to scam people and apparently nowhere is safe, not even a 7-Eleven. You guys need to be careful with all the 7-Elevens that you go to, you guys. They are literally scamming people at the 7-Eleven. They have installed credit card scammers on top of the credit card machine in order to take your information, y'all. And he knows about it. Check this out. Bro, are you sure it's not fake? Buddy. Yeah. Why are you holding it down so hard? Look. It's literally a scanner. We could call the police right now. Look, he knows. He knew it's damn well. Don't use your cards in places like this. They're trying to steal your information. Why are you acting confused? You knew I was there. Like, come on, bro. Look, get his name and everything. Because he's saying that he checked and he confirmed it. My name is. He don't want to show his name. The guy's light come over here. Give me a cigarette. Yeah, but I thought you checked it. You, you, said, you said that it was real. You said you checked, but obviously not, bro. Look, this is a real tapper. What is this? You put tape here. Now this one. New so how come it says right here top board. to pay? Taps up here. Why does it say? Yeah, he checked it. He checked it to make sure the fake one was on top. <laughs> yeah, he definitely knew because I know this is what they do in India. India has all the scam call centers located all around the world, y'all. This is what they do. They literally call old people who have no idea what's going on with their bank accounts, and they scam them out of money. And now they're taking it to the gas station as well. This is the third 7-Eleven I come across with these scammers on it. So y'all need to be careful going in the gas station especially the 7-elevens y'all this video is strictly for entertainment purposes only i am only raising awareness to interesting situations during these interesting times like comment and share for more videos like this thank you for tuning to my frequency let's get this shift y'all peace in
So they use those machines to get the credit card numbers. And then they upload the credit card numbers to the dark web. They sell them in batches. Now, these people get the number. They get your address. They get your uh Last four of your social sometimes, they'll get the three-digit code on the back, the expiration date. And so when people buy these batches of cards, they use some sort of technology to transfer your balance to a blank card that they then sell to someone for like half as much as it's worth. So then they get the cash and then somebody is literally there with a cloned card taking money out of an ATM. And, you know, unfortunately it is illegal all the way around, but I think some of the people who buy these cards don't, really know how they obtained these numbers. They have an idea that they're just like putting a number in a machine and it's coming out of nowhere. But no, this is coming from a person and it's stealing. Wait till you guys hear what this gentleman found in his yard. What's up? TikTok is outside a while ago. I got my dog throwing a stick. We heard a bunch of coming across the street. I figured it was a bunch of locusts or bugs. I don't know, June bugs or something. They flew over our head probably seven, eight feet. One of them hit the pole, and you could hear it on the ground. <laughs> I thought it was one of those Katie did things. But you tell me, why in the hell would this shit right here be flying around? Somebody please explain to me. What the hell is that thing? You see that, guys? That's... No bug. What the hell that is. And, and I found out as I was picking it up, if you squeeze that on the the end on each end, then it's going to do it one time. Then I guess it shuts it off. So somebody, for the love of God, please tell me what that is. I don't want to be here anymore. What the hell? Stop it. Stop. What's it doing? We need to pay attention to this man's TikTok and make sure that he doesn't go anywhere because something tells me that whoever created that knows exactly where it is right now. (laughs) Wait until you guys hear this interaction between a Muslim man and a follower of our Lord Jesus Christ who is from Africa. And I need you to apologize. You said, I'm from Africa. You are surprised that we from Africa worship a white man. Yes. And I said, you Muslims colonize many countries and you impose Islam and a God from Arabia on those countries that you went. Allah was not known in Africa. It was known only in Arabia because it's Arabic language, right? The Jews never mention Allah in all their books. You can, the best you can get close to is Elaha, which is not the same anyway. So the name Allah is not known by any of the previous prophets. It's a new name. And according to the Torah, we don't need to follow a a God that is not known by our forefathers. Exactly. If an angel comes to you preaching a different gospel, let him be accursed. Now, for you to say we Africans worship a white man, it shows you are ignorant. Why I'm saying you are ignorant, respectfully, is because Jesus is not from Europe. He's from Israel. They are not white people. The fact that some idiots make a picture of a white man and they bow to is against the Bible. So you don't call them Christians and you don't impose that on me. You don't know me from anywhere and you say I'm worshiping a white man. That's why I said I was offended. Did you see the other guy's face? He's like, oh, oh, wait, I'm talking to somebody who actually knows something. But seriously, nobody thinks Jesus was a white man. It's 
most likely that he had at least pretty dark tan skin, right? You know, most cultures have people of various skin tones. The Lord did not separate people by color. He separated them by tribe and language. And the only reason why certain tribes you were not supposed to, you know, recreate with was because of the Nephilim DNA, not because of anybody's skin tone. Our next video is a bit of a long one, but a couple of days ago, a pastor preached an entire sermon, and then at the end, he made an announcement and said that his wife died and that he needed the congregation to pray for him, and now her family is asking for an investigation on what actually happened to her. A pastor preaches a sermon, then tells people, Hey, I need everybody to just, you know, just pray for me and the family because my wife died. Um, he then says she had mental health issues. She offed herself, according to him. But, well, there's more to the story. He may actually be involved. With millions watching and many people benefiting from this program called Indisputable, we just need 1% of the viewers to become a paid member so we can continue to bring this content to you. Now back to the show. I'm going to show you his post sermon first and then get into the background. Here it is. We're not going to do an altar call today. Instead, um, instead, um, I'm going to have you stand up and I'm going to make an announcement. And um, after the announcement, I'm going to ask that you, um, you leave church quietly and, and don't talk about the announcement here in the building. Please, if you can, so y'all can stand to your feet. Um, before I make the announcement, I also want to say that um, my request to you is that you will continue to come to church and serve and give um, for the next you know little bit. Cause I don't want to have I'm taking a little bit of a break and I don't want to have to worry about the church. My break may be a few days, a few weeks. I don't know. Um, I got a call late last night. My wife has passed away. And yeah, and it was a, it was self induced and it was uh, up in North Carolina. And um, we're gonna have a funeral for her next Sunday here at 3 p.m. And so um, it's, it's all I can, yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of going on um, adrenaline right now. So y'all pray for me and my kids and everybody. And uh, she was, she wasn't, y'all knew that she wasn't well mentally. And that uh, she needed her, her medicine that was hard to get to her. And so um, I'm sure there'll be more details to come. But um, just keep our family in your prayers. And I'm gonna well, Pastor, you're right about that. There are more details to come. Put it in picture full of mass. I'm about to bring you the details now. So he said, Y'all know that she had some mental issues. She wasn't, you know, able to get her medicine. Per Fox 31, Pastor John Paul Miller of Myrtle Beach was released from his duties amid an ongoing investigation into the death of his wife, 30-year-old Mika Miller. It's already suspicious that one of the first things that he mentions is her mental health. It just sounds like he's trying to paint this picture, right? Miss Miller was found to have suffered a fatal gunshot wound to the head at Lumber River State Park in Lumberton, North Carolina. That's according to a local newspaper. Okay. Pastor John Paul Miller of Solid Rock Church in Myrtle Beach announced his wife's death during a recent service, claiming it was okay six months after she filed for divorce. And even before police have determined a cause of death, her family and friends urged the police to thoroughly investigate her sudden death, while Miller asked his church congregation not to discuss it inside yeah. the church. Now, the overseer of Solid Rock Church is um, in market common, excuse me, sent a notice to his members on Sunday that Pastor Miller has been released from all ministerial functions. The church's website also suspended over the weekend and now redirects to a web page that says, quote, this account has been suspended. Um, the wife, Miss Miller's death comes as Robeson County Sheriff's Office opens an investigation into the April 27th shooting. Quote, officers in the process of gathering information from people in South and North Carolina 
as part of the investigation into how Miller died. Okay, so <clears throat> April 27th, not a couple days ago. Major McLean told the outlet, McLean revealed that there was no indication of the community being in danger. Quote, she has struggled with before each time we would help her through it and take her to the doctor and we got through it and everything was fine. She even gave a few testimonies here at church that we have on video. The pastor husband, John Paul said, quote, she battled God took care of her and got her through it, end quote. So according to court documents, as the pastor claims, he and his wife, quote, spend every night together for hours just talking and talking and talking. Well, according to the documents, Ms. Miller filed for divorce from her husband, October 2023. Trouble in paradise. The case was dismissed in February, but a few days later, John Paul Miller filed for separate support and maintenance, seeking financial support as the couple were still, they were still legally married. In April, the wife also filed for, quote, separate support and maintenance with a hearing scheduled for June 5th. Her family- you cannot serve God and mammon. And are we surprised that one of their issues was that they were trying to go after money from each other? It doesn't sound like it was very amicable. Emily is seeking um, hashtag justice. For Mika, as they claim a no contact order and a divorce was filed days before her death. But the congregation didn't know that. The local paper. Kansas native, she was a Kansas native, was the worship leader, graphics designer, youth leader, women's ministry leader, and pastor's assistant for the church. Her final social media post was this selfie with the caption that read, quote, When terrible, terrible, terrible things happen to you, y'all know what I'm talking about. RPF, that means resting peace face. She is survived um, by her husband, siblings, and five stepchildren. Very sad. Very Very sad sad story. Um, This story is still developing. Um, I got to say, based on the information, I will question the husband too, especially that post sermon, sermon net that he gave at the end. And and seemingly, first of all, man, how are you preaching and your wife just died, bro? That's what I'm saying. Hmm. You got through a whole sermon and your wife just died? Right. And then after the sermon, all of a sudden you get sensitive and you need people to pray for you? Come right. on, man. Turn on the waterworks. All right, Mr. Mayor, thoughts. Went to Divinity School in Wake Forest, brother. Uh, working mm-hmm. on my message in Divinity. So. Hey, man. I do not remember a time where things weren't put on your heart and you did not speak on it during your sermon. That's the right. idea that you had the wherewithal to do an entire sermon and then have the gall to tell people not talk about it is church. People hug and people hug you when you're going through things. Your testimony is supposed to be your glory. I'm confused wholeheartedly by what happened here. Furthermore, somebody should be talking to me anyway, because if they had a no contact and y'all talk for hours and hours every night, you were involved in no contact. Because when you have no contact, you can't talk to that person directly or their friend. So the idea that you and your wife were talking hours and hours and hours every night, you violated that. And we could just start to unravel this entire story at that point. Exactly. Because once they see the records and see that they didn't talk, why did you have the need to lie about talking to your wife mm-hmm. when she didn't file divorce and a no contact? Wow. Man, I got to tell you, brother, that definitely this is going to be a story that develops over time um, because seemingly uh, there's a lot more twists and turns to this story than what the pastor has revealed. And so we will bring updates as they come. Well, he absolutely has a motive. At the very least. And it certainly does not help his case that he lied and said that they speak and spend hours and hours together when they have a no contact order. So they don't just hand those out without something happening. So there is a history, too. What do you guys think? Do you think that he has something to do with it? Let me know in the chat.
I really can't believe that at this point, Kenneth Copeland has a congregation. Like, people really will believe anything. His whole ministry is proof that people just don't read the word of God. Like the fact that people sit in that congregation and they know he's got all these private jets. The man's eyes look like he's a straight up demon. I mean, look at that. COVID-19. COVID-19. I blow, I blow the wind of God, the wind wind of God. on you. On you. Because we in have the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So standing faith. in the office of the prophet of God, I execute judgment on you, COVID-19. Oh, I call you done. I call you don't go on. You come down. Come down and you crawl on your oh. belly like God commanded you when he put his foot on your head. He's not human. I must have forgot that verse. Burn. 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 Well, I'm telling you, it gets hot down there. I mean, like Jesse says, it's Africa hot down there, man. And it gets... <laughs> Are you listening to me? Oh, yeah, it's, I'm it's right there on the coast. It gets muggy. And that's what it takes to kill this thing. Uh, it hates heat. It hates humidity. It hates water. <laughs> it just dies. I hollered at the top of my voice, in the name of Jesus, you get back up there where you belong. Boy, up it went. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I messed us up. The verse on this is 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 17, and I think it describes him perfectly and why he still has a congregation. So I'm going to read it real quick. 2 Timothy 3 verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away." For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Kenneth Copeland is absolutely a reprobate concerning the faith. Verse 9, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which come unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. But what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Amen. Well, I'm going to go back up right there because lovers of their own selves. I would say that that describes Mr. Copeland perfectly. You 
get up, stand up, I'm personal, I'm highly motivated. <laughs> guys that is love right there i want to thank approve for uh finding that video <laughs> apparently he likes it when i cry on stream <laughs> and then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free a person's not ready for the truth they're gonna get angry at it and protect the lie mm -hmm. by rejecting you that's what i've learned man loves his candy and if you try to take it away from him, he will hate you until he's ready. Now, you don't have that response from people that love God who are doing wrong. When a person loves God and they hear something and they're doing wrong, they get instantly convicted and they say, I'm done. That makes sense to me. That's true. And I think that's, that's the light. Yes. I've been deceived. So I'm, I'm abandoning that. That's how a godly person responds. Mm -hmm. But people who are not godly in that area have an idol. And that idol is, is, is in the form of a pleasure that they really get a lot of personal gratification from, they will reject you. Mm. This is what I've seen over 50 some years yeah. of, of doing this from church to church every week, you know, for all these years, that some people are not ready to make Jesus the Lord of their lives, but they must understand that if Jesus is not the Lord of your life, your inheritance is in a position. It's not in an experience. So you are positionally righteous, but experientially you act like a lost person because wow. you haven't transferred it out of the bank into your pocket. Good point. It is a free gift that everyone has access to if they want it. Not only will they reject you, but they'll call you some straw man term like, like, oh, you believe in oneness or modalism or you're a dispensationalist. Like they don't even know what these words mean. And furthermore, if you feel like you need to call someone a term like that in order to discredit them without actually looking at what it is they're telling you. Well, that's a, that's a you problem. You like things that tickle your ears. And obviously, because if somebody's giving you verses and telling you to go read them for yourself and you just dismiss it and you're angry about it, then what are your motives? Are you in good faith?
Now it's time to get into the Word of God. Today we're going to be reading in Titus chapter 2. Go ahead and get your Bibles if you want, but as always, I will be putting it on the screen for you. Verse 1, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given too much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands and to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men, likewise, exhort to be sober-minded in all things, shewing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine, shewing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. In that verse, it, it talks about having a pattern of good works, but it's referring to your doctrine. Your doctrine is to be unblameable. We are called to be uh, ministers of reconciliation. We are supposed to share the revelation of the mystery and the gift that our Lord has given uh, to us and has made available to anyone. Uh, what we will be judged on is our doctrine on that judgment. Do you want to burn up in the fire? You will be saved, but you will get no gifts and you will burn up as wood, hay, and stubble. Verse 8, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not purloining, but shewing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. May your conversations be on the things above. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That right there is the moment we are waiting for, guys. I'm ready. My bags are packed. Just waiting for him to come get me. Come on, God. No, just kidding. <laughs> All right, verse 14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Now, I quickly also would like to read Philemon 2.15. Because I really think that it applies to the way that we are supposed to be living today. And the fact that we are representatives of Christ. We are ambassadors for Christ. It says that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world." When you have Christ in you, people can see it. They don't know exactly what it is, but they can feel that you're at peace. They can feel that you have a happiness or a contentment that they can't seem to find. And even that one thing it may have someone ask you, hey, what are you doing? What changed? And that right there is an opportunity to tell them, hey, the only way that you are ever going to be this content is if you have Jesus Christ as the head of your life. Well, guys, that is our show for today. If you made it all the way to the end, please type Jesus is Lord in the comments so I know who you are. I'll see you guys next week. Until next time, stay prayed up and stay highly motivated.